Symbols Eat Guitar returns with their third full length album entitled Lose, which I may come across a little bit biased in this review because Lens's Alien is one of my top 10 favorite albums of all time, and Why There Are Mountains is probably my top 20, so yeah. First note about the album is that Symbols Eat Guitar is, is known for their, their hectic yet beautiful instrumentation with quiet, loud, quiet, loud with not a lot of verse chorus verse going on and uh, if you ever listened to one of their other albums and hadn't gotten into them and was like man I wish they would revisit this one part of their song multiple times in the song this album might be the one that, that wins you over I think because because they I wouldn't call it a hooky album but they do incorporate their hooks and they play them more than once throughout the album you still get your prog rock-esque types of songs from songs like Place Names Laramie and Two Hip Soul, but they're they're constructed different than previous albums. Like in Place Names, it still has the verse chorus verse format, but then it descends into a crescendo of, of madness and and just complete like atmospheric tones. And Laramie is is the longest song at the, on the album, at eight minutes, and uh, that song descends into guitar rock heaven at the end of the song, just beautiful bliss and sublime as well as Two Hip Soul, which is the final track on the album, and it might be their best closer yet. Uh, like Blood Does is a really good closer from Why There Are Mountains, but this is a, this is a really beautiful, really touching uh, outro for the album, honestly. The album even starts with a six minute long song, which is something that we're used to seeing from Symbols E Guitars, but it's an unusual six minute long song, because it does have that verse-chorus-verse format to it. Even though the choruses and, and verses that they may repeat might have a couple different words than, than the last time, and it truly does capture the whole overall feeling and emotion of this album and the nostalgia and growing up and wanting to maybe relive those days. Another thing noticeable about this album is that there are a great deal of, of shorter songs, even though on Liz's Alien there was a lot of shorter songs, but those short songs on Liz's Alien felt like they were like four or five minutes long because they fit so much stuff into, into such little such a little song. It, it, was, it was amazing, but on this album the short songs feel like single worthy songs. They feel like songs I could hear in a movie, which is not a bad thing. Uh, I've always thought that they could do this and they're they're adapting to it. And you have songs like Warning and XR. Or Warning uh, is, if, I, if I'm going to quote the singer correctly, he said it's a radio rock song uh, at one of their concerts. And XR is the closest thing you're going to get to punk rock from this band. It's a harmonica driven rocker anthem Irish pub song. It, it, honestly, if you didn't know it was Simulzy Guitar before walking into it, you would not know that it's Simulzy Guitars. If that isn't enough, you get a kind of a ballad type song in, a, in Child Bride, which is, is really, really gorgeous. Like, I could hear this song in a movie, in a really, really sad scene in a movie, and uh, the, the details of the song about, about growing up to a, growing up being a friend to a kid who is in an abusive home, uh, it really shows in the song, and you, you feel the singer, and you feel the emotions, and you just feel a lot of th you feel a lot of things throughout this album. And on previous albums, you feel a lot of things too, but this is this is different. You know, it might be a little bit more of a cohesive feel throughout your soul. You know, and you got you got a sleeper like Life Net, which uh, which is is the chords constructed in the pre-chorus and and in the chorus is just is, they never cease to amaze me with with that kind of stuff, with chord selections and stuff. And the chorus in Life Net is just, it's probably the most sing-along chorus on the whole entire album. It's just, it's, I, I could, I, I could hear some of these songs on the radio, I, I probably won't, but I could hear that one on the radio, I think. Overall, Lose by Symbols and Guitars is a, is a direction in a much broader, but I think better direction, uh, because in the past, maybe they had isolated some listeners. I don't, their past material just, I was in instinctively drawn to it, and some people aren't. I think this will draw to more people, and it will make them a much bigger band, and I plan on seeing them live soon, and I can't wait to hear all of these songs live. This is a really, really good rock album. It is the best album I've heard this year. I've heard a, a few pretty good albums, but this is the best one, I think. The album comes out August 26th. Uh, let me know if you liked it, if you hated it. There's a good chance you probably didn't hate it, because it is a really, really solid, borderline perfect uh, indie rock album with a lot of pop sensibility and a lot of experimental uh, different elements to it. So let me know what you think and thanks for watching.